Hey guys, welcome to the session by K21 Academy. We are going to talk about AWS identity and access management. Now let's talk about how things went before AWS. So before AWS or before IAM in general, it was not that safe in a corporate to share the password over a phone or through email. That was the practice that was existed at that time. Now we all can remember those days when we need to switch to a different account or we had just one admin password commonly stored in a location or one person would reset it and maintain it at any time or we need to log in we call that person ask for the admin password over the phone and then we try logging in that was not at all secure somebody could walk by and sort of eavesdrop and get the password now they walk away with the password with them so they are all possible when we share the password over the phone and through the internet or email now with aws lot of options are available that i am not sharing the password over the unsecure medium Now Slack is a third party product available with AWS. It is not an AWS product, but Slack is in third party application that is hosted on AWS. And it is really a communication tool that helps people to share a document or anything else. So now we are not sharing the password over the form rather than through applications and no eavesdrop person can really catch the password and try it in their system to access our environment. That's not possible, right? So you can see the difference now. Back then sharing password was only through phone and email and you would write it on a paper and you gave it to somebody but now technology is providing provisions enough for us to share the password in a secure way so aws identity and access management is a web service for securely controlling access to the aws resource now it really helps us to authenticate our sort of limit access to a certain set of users accessing the aws account or certain set of users accessing a certain set of resources in aws account now if you see this picture we have an iam administrator who is trying to allocate permissions to different group of people so we have group 1 on the top and group 2 in the middle and group 3 towards the end so the administrator using iam empowers the administrator to allow access to certain group to certain resources that's what iam is all about In this session we are going to see how can you secure your account using AWS identity and access management services. Now cloud security is the highest priority in AWS and when we host our environment in the cloud we can be rest assured that we are hosting our environment in a data center or in a network architecture built to meet the requirement of the most security sensitive organization. Also guys before moving on to this session please subscribe to our channel so that you will never miss an update on our upcoming videos. Now let us take a quick glance at the agenda. Firstly, we will be introduced to what is identity and access management service and then we will go through IAM users, group, policy and role. Post that, we will be going through AWS users which are root user and IAM user. And finally, at the end we will try to understand the relationship between user, group, policy and role. So we have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate SAAC02. And in this clip, our expert will talk about AWS IAM services. Hey there, so welcome back. And in this lesson, we are going to look at identity and access management service, which helps in securing, which stands for users, groups. How do you secure your resources? Everything about that in identity and access management. So, what is IAM service? Uh, it's a security control for individuals or a group of users access. to all your aws resources be it like storage networking your databases your linux virtual machines networking all application services everything that you are doing on or you can do in aws cloud how do you access that is about identity and access management there's other things as well like your key management but we'll in this lesson we're going to focus on the core iam services which are your users groups roles and policies um so what are these we'll look into that and you control your passwords multi factor authentication we'll cover that as well what is multi factor authentication and so on your access keys and all those services under identity and access management so first let's begin with the overview about these four main cat things within uh, aws which is users groups policies and our roles so the users i am users are the individuals like you and me uh with a set of permissions um the one who can log in to the console or you can log in through command line or do something on cloud aws cloud so users typically have credentials which means it could be a password it could be a key or it could be something to either make an api call which is application programming interface calls 
or they probably might be doing it from the console or different ways to access uh, the, uh, the AWS resources. So that's IAM users. Whereas groups is collection of IAM users um, so which have similar set of permissions. So I can say one department, put them into one group and give them a specific uh, access. So the, all the IAM users um, uh, are in a group, in a particular group can access um, the resources by giving them a specific set of permissions to that group. The IAM policies, policies dictate or specifies the permissions uh, that you want to give to either a user or to a group or to a role. And then IAM role is a set of permissions um, that you assign so that you can make a request to that uh, AWS service. Request could be uh, uh, accessing it, deleting it, creating it, maybe editing it. So set of permissions that you uh, can apply and then you, that role can be assigned to either a user or to a group or to an application or maybe a service itself. So role is something similar to user on which you can apply the permissions, but the major difference between user and role is that user will have a credential, which means a either a key or a password or something to log in or access those resources. Whereas role is just a set of resources. You don't log in through that role. That role is assigned to a user or a, a set of uh, a resource. I hope that makes sense. Now, let me tell you, uh, let me go and show it to you on the console where you will be able to create or manage these, just play with them. We'll have, depending on which guide you're picking, we might be definitely playing with some users and groups and permissions and policies and so on. So I'm on the console. So I'm going to first pick up from here, identity and access management, and which is under security, identity IAM, or you sim simply go here and search for IAM, and then click on this service, which is manage access to the AWS resources. And this is where you have groups, users, roles, policies, and there are other things as well. But let me go and um, go to, uh, and if you want to do multi-factor authentication, what are those? I'll cover that in a minute. But first, let's go to here, users. And right now, I don't have any IEM user, and we'll cover that brings to the next point, what is a users? And if you see here now, on the top here, you see my region, which I talk, talk about is a global. So my users identity and access management is a global service, which is applicable for all uh, entire region, all the regions. It's not specific to a specific region. So it's a global service and IAM does not require any reason selection. That's why, because it's a global service. So let's, this was uh, users, groups, policies, roles. Let's first look at AWS users. As I said earlier, user, um, is an identity that can access AWS resources and you set permissions on that uh, user. That user could, you can integrate with external directory services like Microsoft Active Directory or integrate with, um, and you can log in via externally as well uh, on that users. Now users in AWS are two type, root user and IAM user. I'll explain these both, uh, but root user is the global user that you, you that gets created when you, your account is created first time. Uh, so you can't delete that user. That's kind of a super user and uh, root user. And let me show you what I mean by root user and IAM user. So if you see any user that I'm creating under here, under users, these are identity nexus management users. And if I create them, then they will be able to log in to the AWS console. Let me first log out from here. So I'll click here. I've logged in and click on sign out. And when I'm trying to sign into the console, if you see first time you're logging in, it says you root user. The user that you create first time that has a kind of a super user that has full privileges, you'll be logging it as user that. And then later you can create multiple sub users that and give them the right kind of a role or access so that you can create. And for those users, they'll be logging as a IAM user. And they will first need an account ID, which basically when you create, you'll get that account ID. In my case, it's oh, the account I'll show you in a minute as gain as well. So this is the use, root user and I'll be logging in as my user ID, which is a super user. And um, this is my super user. I'll log in as password. And now I'm inside that uh, my console 
and I can then go and search for my look and then create my additional user. So these will be my IAM users. So right now I don't have any IAM user. I have just one root user. I have 12 roles. I have no groups and I'll will and the policies. There are two policies customer managed policies. There are default policies that comes. We'll see what the policy is. So this is my root user. Similar to that, I can create additional users with identity and access management users and give them necessary policies or apply some permissions. Policy is nothing but set of permissions that you can apply on a user or a group so that they can see what they can do or it policies will control what they can do or can't do in terms of whether they can access, manage, delete, uh, create and so on these resources. Now MFA stands for multi-factor authentication. Uh, so when you saw that I was logging in, I was just log logging in with a user ID, but single password only. Well, this only thing was I was just giving my password and that's not secure. So what I can do is I can come here and enable multi-factor authentication. So when they are logging in, it's going to prompt them for more than one password. It's not just password, it'll prompt me password, but one more factor of authentication, which means that could be my uh, uh, a uh, one-time token which I can get on an app like Google Authenticator or a message on my phone or an email message or a token on my uh, email. So that's multi-factor authentication. We'll have a lapse later in the program for you how to enable multi-factor authentication. Now group is nothing but collection of users on which you can apply the policies um, so that rather than giving permissions on individual users, you can put them into groups so you can uh, then apply policies on that. Now policy is nothing uh, but set of instructions or permissions which will grant uh, necessary access on resources. Resources could be in this case bucket which is nothing but my storage, a simple storage service a bucket or you can have you can also granularize them and say I have a full access, I have a read only access, I have um, a specific access you can grant. And then finally a role. So role is as I said earlier is um, an identity that you can create in your account that's specific up and, and that has specific permissions. So in this particular case, I've created a role, uh, for example, in this diagram here, I've created a role called AWS service role for Amazon EKS. EKS is a Kubernetes service. So I'm creating a role which will give them uh, permissions to manage my elastic Kubernetes service. And whosoever has that role, whether it's a user or it's a group, or it's an instance that particular identity will be able to work on that uh, or will have those permissions. So roles are similar to IAM user. The only difference, as I said, is that um, um, they can be associated. They are not just linked to one user. They can be applied to multiple users that role and you can grant and access revoke a role to a user and role does not have a password similar to or uh, or like the way you have in IAM user. So that's a role. And this is the relationship between users, groups, policy and a role. So there is a many to many relationship between users and groups. Now the policies uh, which governs uh, permissions can be applied to a user. It can be applied to a group or it can be applied to a role and role will have role can be applied again to a user or a group or a user or group can have a role. So that's relationship between users, groups and policies. Now, if you're part of identity, in, uh, if you're part of AWS solution architect training program, we'll do some laps on these. And if you're part of uh, AWS DevOps, again in AWS DevOps, when we are creating access control, uh, when we are creating um, command line interface or when we are giving uh, permissions on to we will be creating some roles later in the program in the respective labs. So that is identity and access management users groups and uh, roles and policies. So we have put down everything about the certification including the basic concepts that one should know everything like introduction to AWS, security management AWS, object storage options, designing computing environment, networking and monitoring services, leverage route 53 for hosting zones, database server and analytics, application and messaging services, configuration management and automation, architecting on AWS 1 and architecting on AWS 2. So in this training, we take you from basic to advanced level along with the tips and resources for clearing the certification exam. We also have a separate team working for CV preparation and on-job support. 
So if you want to become an AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate and want to learn right from basics to expert level, then we have a comprehensive step-by-step -step training for you that includes hands-on labs, including the exam preparation and most important part, one year on-job support. So if you are interested in this program, I would highly recommend you to attend the free class which covers most of the topics like why and who should learn AWS, cloud service deployment models and AWS services, demo on creating S3 bucket and making data available to the entire world and many other topics. So if you are interested in this free class, you can visit k21academy.com slash AWS SSA02.